glad you're all here. Um, I need Mrs. Rucker to um, hold the roll. Okay, so Ms. Arnold is absent. She's on vacation. So Ms. Hunt? Here. Mr. Morrison? Here. Ms. Regano? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Do you have a board? Would you all please stand for the pledge?
Good evening. Um, very happy to be here. This is always an exciting night when we can recognize our colleagues. I'm actually breathing a little easier right now. Um, I forgot my thoughts and words for Sandy in my truck. When Aaron arrived, she went to the board office first, so I was thinking, how am I going to get through this? And we just did a book study as administrators on how to basically not look like a fool when you're publicly speaking. So there was not a chapter about, well, I also forgot my reading glasses, so there wasn't a chapter about what do you do if you can't really read your own notes. The other half of your presenter didn't show up, and I'm very relieved to know we have the podium. So it all worked out. So. A little bit about Angie Mackey. Angela Mackey is a health teacher at Ankeny Middle School. She went to school at Wright State University and earned her bachelor's in health and physical education with a concentration on athletic training. She also received her master's degree from Mary Grove College in the art of teaching. Outside of school, Angie likes to run half marathons, go to the lake, and spend time with her children. She resides in Franklin, Ohio with her husband, James. Her son, Pierce, who is 15, will be going into 10th grade next fall. And her daughter, Sienna, who is 8, will be going into 3rd grade next fall. I've known Angie probably almost 15 years. We were both teachers at Beaver Creek High School. And we were sort of reunited at Ankeny. And Angie was charged with the job of coming to Ankeny Middle School and installing health classes quarter classes for every single student at Ankeny this year. So anyone who's ever spent more than 15 minutes in a middle school would agree health is a, is a needed thing. Um, with that comes a lot of challenges. Any one of us who have ever started a new job, it's a new building, it's a new culture, there's a new age group. Um, Angie handled all those transitions seamlessly. Um, she had a lot of questions. Where's my room? When can I get in? All those natural questions that a teacher in late July and August always have on their minds. Um, but at no point was there ever a complaint if I didn't have the answer to that question. And um, we had a great conversation in October. And you know how that rush of the first three or four weeks, you are just running around everywhere. And she just expressed to me how happy she was to be at Ankeny, how well things were going. And she overcame her biggest fear coming to Ankeny. And, and it was those little sixth graders and how to handle them. And she said, actually, it was her favorite part. And they are. I can say, coming from the high school for 20 years, to, they are so cute. They are still, they're still innocent. Um, at least the first semester. So, um, we had two great speakers at our night of excellence last night. Um, and a night in which we honor perfect attendance, all A's on the honor roll, all A's and B's. We were able to have two former Ankeny Middle School students uh, give a short speech to those students, and they both did a great job. These students are valedictorians and salutatorians, and anyone that's been to graduation knows they are always the home run um, as far as the speakers, and they both did a great job. And it was a night where we were honoring academic achievement, but I love their message. And as I was sitting there listening, partially thinking about what am I going to say tonight, um, something really crystallized in my mind. And, and both their themes were not just the academic achievement and the congratulations that comes with that, but the importance of, as you work through high school, relationships. And that's what they're going to remember most about learning how to be a, become a team player, about learning about you're just going to have challenges. You have to work through them. And it, it dawned on me, they pretty much described, Angie, your attributes. Absolutely a team player, poised, and the reason she's up here tonight is because she develops relationships. And if you've ever taught or even been around children, you have to develop that relationship. Or they really are not interested in anything you say or do after that. You have to earn their trust. And Angie did that instantly with the students and with the staff. Um, she's always looking to grow and get better, and she's already involved herself in a program we're going to start next year to help get those sixth graders organized before the school day starts, and it's on her own time. Um, Angie, that is the reason you're up here tonight. You are a great teammate, a great colleague, and a very well-deserved. Congratulations.
that there are so many deserving teachers from Beaver Creek that I've worked with. So just being nominated, I feel so blessed. Um, I think I'm going to keep trying. But like Dale said, coming from the high school, I was a little stressed out. Um, I was really nervous about going from sophomores, juniors, and seniors down to sixth grade. But I absolutely love my sixth graders. I love the students. And as you guys know, we are so lucky in Beaver Creek because the kids in Beaver Creek are just outstanding kids. They really are. And the staff is great. I felt so welcome to Ankeny. Dale and Brian helped me so much and all the other teachers. So I just want to say thank you.
Sandy, Sandy I, I think we're going to take you up on that offer. Next, I would like to invite Mr. Jones and Mrs. Nancy Strange, as well as Ms. Nancy Good evening, I'm Jeffrey Jones and I'm the principal at Beaver Creek High School. Uh, just to share before we get going with our honorees, today was one of the great traditions that, uh, to my understanding, is decades old at our high school and it was senior dress up day. And when I think about this tradition, it's one of the most unique things I've seen in all the high schools that I've had the privilege to, to serve in, and that our seniors take great pride in getting dressed up. They look absolutely incredible. They're, their outfits mirror what you would see at the graduation where the ladies are in white gowns and gentlemen are in black gowns. They get dressed up and they look absolutely incredible. So these seniors who have been traveling our halls and do what I would consider typical teenager gear, they transform into adults. And it's absolutely incredible to see. Now, spending time with them today where they're going you know, to the halls and taking pictures with folks and, and getting uh, signatures from friends and from teachers, it's, it's really neat scene. It's got a lot of energy, I'll be honest with you. But the truth of the matter is, it's, it's one of the things that makes Beaver Creek unique. So why do I tell you about this? When I start talking about these two ladies over here, I talk about fabric. Both of these ladies over here are part of that fabric and part of that tradition, part of why Beaver Creek is what it is and why it's a great place to go to school and to work. I'm honored tonight to speak on behalf of what I consider a foundational staff member here at Beaver Creek in Nancy Strange. She is what I would call a once in a generation staff member. She's beloved by her students and the staff alike. And, that, and that's, that's tough to do sometimes, but she has made it look effortless. I promise you the time will show, more than show, the impact she's had on this building as those she has come in contact with will certainly carry on the things that they have learned from her. For me personally, she's been a great colleague in that she has always been honest with me about things going on in the building while being a problem solver. Totally indicative of her leadership qualities. That is, that is sometimes tough to do to come in and say, hey, you need to hear this. She never hesitated. Never hesitated to come in to this new guy and say, hey, Jeff, you know what? You might want to take a look at this, and I appreciate that on so many levels. Nancy received her Bachelor of Science degree in Education in 1985 and received a Master's in Education and Allied Professions in 2011. She began her career in Beaver Creek here in 1985 and subbed in this district from 1985 to 1988. She was hired as a teacher in 1988. Probably a couple years after we should have because Dag has done such a good job. She's been smarter and got you in here earlier. She has served as a mentor to many teachers in our district, both formally and informally. And I, I watched it even through this year with one of our new hires who is definitely blossoming with her leadership. She's also served as our social studies department head, which it's a great functioning department. They are a group who works together. And I know that just from my coaching years, the leader, when you have a well-functioning team, it is a product of the leadership that's provided to those teammates. In addition to all her teaching duties and social studies. Nancy, you'll be missed by our students, our staff, our community, and by this principal right here. You have, you have been great to me, and I appreciate that very much. Thank you for all you've given to our school and our community. I give to you, retiree, this is Nancy Strange.
I would like to start to first thank my family, uh, my parents, who provided me with a great work ethic um, to help me to continue in this career. Darren, you can thank my parents for all the days I didn't miss from school because they instilled that in me tremendously. Um, also, I thank my husband, my daughter, and my son, who every night listened to my stories, whether they were frustrating or funny, and then had to you know, laugh with me or calm me down, whichever it might be. Um, to my sister and to my nephew, who are my confidants, um, who I shared a lot with. I'm a graduate of Beaver Creek High School, so I've been here for quite a long time. Um, I started in the first public kindergarten class here at Beaver Creek, so uh, that was kind of neat, and graduated in 1981. I could probably go through and name all, a teacher from every year that I was in school here at Beaver Creek that still means something to me and meant a lot to me throughout my entire life. But I have to most importantly mention um, my senior government teacher, Dave Sisson, who is a retired Beaver Creek teacher. Um, and he is what really molded me into becoming a social studies teacher. Um, his excitement, his interest, the way he taught just really sparked something in me. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher, teaching all the neighborhood kids in the basement with worksheets and stuff. But he really instilled that joy and that um, excitement of teaching. And I will forever be indebted to him. And I hope that my students can carry that idea on and say the same things about me later on in their lives and when they retire maybe as teachers from Beaver Creek schools or from somewhere else. Um, and on my way over, I have to hear a song. I don't usually hear country music. But um, Tim McGraw's song and the title of the song which struck me was Be Humble and Be Kind. Thank you. To my right is our outstanding educator for 2016 17 in Mississippi Virginia. I was privileged enough to be in the room when Mr. Schwedeman presented this award. And I'm always amazed because these awards that you walk in and the kids are kind of like, what's going on, what's going on? But once they figure out what's going on, it's like all their arrows are pointing in the same direction and it's right at that educator because the appreciation and the respect that they show is just absolutely phenomenal. To the point that we were doing um, roller coaster photos with Mr. Gilding. Um, at the end there, which was just absolutely fun to do. So with that said, I'm just absolutely thrilled to present Mindy Burcham tonight. She received her bachelor's degree from Wright State University, has a master's degree in mathematics. Now I know in, in our profession, a lot of times when we do master's degrees, some sort of education, master's in mathematics is incredible, which means her students get to benefit from all that knowledge she has, and you can see it, no question. She's part of our BHS Revived Building Technology Committee, which I truly appreciate that work because they have been instrumental working with Mr. Schumann and his team and our BYOD and then our one-to-one -one Chromebooks that are going to happen next year. She's part of the NHS Faculty Council. She's part of the BHS Social Committee and now has decided to take on the monster that is being a National Honor Society advisor with one of her uh, colleagues in the department, which I am terribly grateful for because I know that it is a huge undertaking for the service that those kids provide to our school. She's also a member of the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Now, things that you may not know about our outstanding educator. In addition to her fitness activities of CrossFit and running, she's a former rugby player. Incredible. Her family tonight includes her husband, Pete, her daughter, Lily, who was in first grade at Valley Elementary, and her son Sam, who will be joining Valley as a big kindergartner next year. She absolutely loves to watch her kids play sports, including hockey, basketball, softball. <coughs> she says anything else they'd like to try, which that's just incredible. That's a great, great attitude to have about it. If you would please join me in applauding our outstanding educator, <laughs> Hello, Maris. 
So my daughter Lily, Mr. Jones mentioned, is a first grader at Valley Elementary. So the other day when I was talking to her about how nervous I was to speak tonight, she had some advice, advice for me. She said, I think you should just say, I'm a math teacher, I don't give speeches. <laughs> So after receiving the news that I was chosen for this awesome award, I received several emails and verbal congratulations from my colleagues, my students, my family and friends, and some community members. And I just want to take this opportunity to formally thank everyone for their continued support and for their encouragement for all my years of teaching. To be nominated for the Outstanding Educator Award in itself and in its own right is, is phenomenal. But to be chosen to represent BHS, a group of teachers that are so talented and so caring for their students, is extremely humbling. I have a lot to be thankful for. I have such outstanding driven students who have very supportive parents. I have colleagues that inspire me to be better every single day. And a school district that I'm proud to be a part of. So every year I advise my seniors, both past and present who are tasked with, the, with choosing a college and a major. Not to choose something that they think will make them a lot of money, not to choose something that will make them famous, not to choose something that may or may not carry some prestigious title, but instead to choose something they love, to choose something that truly interests them, and to choose something that they will look forward to doing for years to come. I can say with the utmost certainty that that is exactly what I have done. Thank you again for choosing me to join this phenomenal group of teachers. Thank you, Mr. Jones. I have the honor of um, asking Miss Debbie Jansen to come up on the stage. You can stand. You can stand here wherever you'd like. Our next award um, goes to Stebby Jansen. We work side by side at Central Office together. I have. Um, don't read while I'm reading, okay? We have a good working relationship. When I think about attention to detail. It's a, it's a meticulous task, and it's very important um, as a district exempt secretary. When I think of that detail and the hard work and getting the job done, I think of Debbie Jansen. This year's outstanding exempt support staff member. Nominated and chosen for this honor, Debbie is truly support, uh, supportive of Beaver Creek City Schools as an employee and as a community. She's a Beaver Creek High School graduate with 38 years of service to Beaver Creek City Schools, and she's not retiring yet. She's resourceful, thoughtful, and willing to get the job done. Over the last seven years, I've worked with Debbie at Central Office, and I can honestly say I trust her like family. Debbie has served, on, served our community as a member of the Beaver Creek Stars Board of Directors, um, and as the tournament director for Beaver Creek Stars for many years, when I'm assuming her, her sons who are with us tonight played basketball on Stars. She and her husband Bill have two sons, both graduates of Beaver Creek High Schools. And she enjoys the outdoors, working in her yard, and hanging by the pool. As her nomination said, Debbie is very knowledgeable, can answer any question is fun to work with and fun to be around. Please join me in recognizing Debbie Jansen as this year's Outstanding Classified Support Employee representing our exempt employees. <laughs>
Middle School Assistant Principal Michelle Height and our two employees that are being recognized this evening from Poi, Liz Driver and April Vanderpool to come up. fabulous ladies, this amazing award. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to go ahead and start with Mrs. Vanderpool because she's the first face you see every morning. April Vanderpool is our Poi Middle School Secretary, although she has been in the district for quite a few years. She started her career as a bus driver. She's also been a lunch monitor, a study hall monitor, an IMC tech, and I think probably five other jobs. I'm pretty sure I've seen you painting the building. So she is a jack of all trades. She's amazing. April holds our building together. She's the glue, absolutely. She not only knows everything that's going on in the building and keeps us all in line, she also has a lot of humor to keep us laughing throughout the day. So I don't think we could do it without her. Uh, April is a devoted mother and grandmother. She's got three beautiful children and two beautiful grandbabies and a brand new baby boy. How old is he now? Three weeks! He's itty bitty. So it's wonderful to hear all the things that she gets to do with her grandkids um, and still come to work and love what she does. So April, we are so thankful to have you. And Mr. Kelly was, he could be here, but he's laid up at home. So he sends his regards. Um, he also and I are very thankful because we've had a lot of new people come into the building and you've trained everyone that comes in and it works amazingly. So thank you for your additional work and being there so early because I think you're very important sometimes. So thank you everybody. Can we congratulate April for our I can give a speech tonight, so I think I've got this. 
First and foremost, I definitely want to thank the Board of Education, the district administration, my school administration, my coworkers, my amazing and wonderful family that is here tonight. I could not be where I am today without any and all of you, so thank you all so very much for giving me this opportunity. I work with many, many, many wonderful educators, so as someone said earlier that so many people deserve this award, I'm just very fortunate to be in the induction class for this year, so definitely very humbled and truly, truly grateful from the bottom of my heart. Um, Mr. Morrison, I want to give you a quick shout out. Many years ago, because this is my 17th year teaching, you probably don't remember this, but one opening day, you made a comment, a quote, and I'm a huge quote person, and you said, kids don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I'm being perfectly honest with everybody in this room, for 17 years, that quote has driven me to be who I am today. So thank you, Mr. Morrison, for so poignantly stating that. It was perfect, and it drives me every day, and will continue to do so in my education career. I love my job, I'm so humbled and so thankful. Thank you so much. Next, I would like to ask Mrs. Sharma Nachmeyer and Ms. Mary Rice to come to the stage, please. come up with some extra information. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but I would like, I'm excited to tell you about our Outstanding Educator of the Year, Mary Rice. Um, her background, Bachelor's of Criminal Justice, 1992 from Ball State University, Master's of Education, 1992 from Wright State University, Master's of Science, School of Counseling, University of Dayton in 2009, and then she taught special ed education for 15 years at Valley, and she's been at Maine as our counselor for nine. Tonight, in preparing, I asked some of her peers to tell me why they knew Mary was so deserving of this award. A group of her teachers said, if anyone deserves this award in recognition, it is Mary Rice. She genuinely cares about everyone in the building, including staff members. She makes herself available to all who need her guidance and support, and Mary is an important part of our school community, and we are happy to call her both our colleague and our friend. She is a treasure. Several others provided me with a list of characteristics for Mary. Dedicated, hardworking, loving, caring, honest, and dependable, just to name a few. Someone else said, back when we had a couple of consecutive years with many changes, Mary would post things that made us smile and laugh. She encouraged us to do crazy dances at the end of the school year, like wearing glow-in-the-dark sticks and dancing on stage for the kids. All these things have led to a positive school atmosphere. Whether it is bringing some fun idea to entertain the students like these dances, or whether it is to promote character education throughout the year, Mary has helped us make Maine into the positive, warm environment that it is today. She is our very own Mary Sunshine, and so for these very very reasons and many, many more, I am honored to present the Outstanding Educator Award to Mary Rex.
I was all, I'm also lucky that I was born into a family that works hard. So working hard for me is not is easy. And I thank my parents for that. I also believe that every single student in our school and every parent I work with have a story to tell. And some of those stories are harder, or journeys are harder than others, but they all need to be heard. And I firmly believe that all of our parents at our schools and, and across the district want what's best for their children. Yeah. They all just go about it in a different way. But if you step back and look at it, what they want is what's best for their child. I believe that my job is to hear that story, hear their concerns, and do what I can do to help. I may not be the best counselor in the district, but I feel like I am very good at listening, and usually that's all they need. And I appreciate very much this honor tonight. I want to thank Sharma. This is our second year, and by far this year has been much better than last year. It's gotten much easier. We work well together, and we support each other, and I really appreciate that. I think she feels like she can lean on me, and I know I definitely can lean on her. I also want to thank my husband, Barry, who puts up with these crazy ideas that I get. Um, and as I get older, I rely on him more and more to make them happen, but um, he's always been very supportive. I also want to thank, I have eight children, and um, five of them came tonight, so they're on the top of my list of the other three. <laughs> I'm going to have to make sure they know that they were missed. Especially the one who said he was going to come here and he apparently forgot that this was happening tonight. So I want to thank them because um, they make life interesting every day. So you know, what, what would I do? Just go home and sit around if I didn't have them to go home to. So thank you so much for this award. I believe working for Beaver Creek has been the biggest blessing in my work career. I love it. I'm proud to be an employee of Beaver Creek Schools and thank you very much. I would like to ask Ms. Bamford, Angie Hemrick, and Megan Bosley to come up, please. Good evening. It is with great pleasure that I have the opportunity to introduce Parkwood's Outstanding Certified Support Staff of the Year, Mrs. Angie Hemrick. She has been a custodian of Beaver Creek City Schools for 23 years, and she's actually a graduate from Beaver Creek High School. She has been married to her lovely husband, Leonard, for 35 years, and they have a wonderful daughter, Casey, a fabulous son-in-law, Nick, and a beautiful grandson, Maverick, who just turned one. In her spare time, she enjoys RVing, spending time with her family, especially her one and only grandson, Maverick, and she is a member of Mount Zion Church. Angie has a desire to provide a safe, clean, and secure, and positive environment for students, staff, and the community. She makes amazing connections with children and helps them feel good about who they are. She encourages students to see they have much to offer as a valued member of our school community. She always has a friendly smile and a helping hand. And in fact, some say that Angie notices a need before it even becomes a need. She approaches each day with a positive attitude and goes above and beyond any request. Angie is a warm-hearted and hard-working individual. She is thoughtful and cares about the people she works with and treats everyone with kindness. Thank you, Angie, for all of the positive contributions and support you provide Parkwood and Beaver Creek City Schools. Congratulations. Thank you.
it is with great pleasure that I have the opportunity to introduce Parkwood's Outstanding Educator Award of the Year, Mrs. Megan Mosley. She began her teaching career in Beaver Creek at Parkwood Elementary in 2005, and she has provided our second graders outstanding education for the past 12 years. Megan received her bachelor's degree from the Wright State University in early childhood education and a master's from Wright State University in reading kindergarten through 12th grade. She is married to her wonderful husband, Ronnie, and they have two lovely children, Alexis, who is nine years old, and Blake, who is five years old. In her spare time, she enjoys being a cheer coach for Kettering Firebirds, We Eagles, or We Cheer. Megan is involved in many school committees, such as Parkwood's Bayotap Committee, which stands for Books Are Our Thing at Parkwood, our School-Wide Prevention Committee, our Positive Behavioral Intervention Support Committee, and our District English Language Arts Committee. Megan is a role model who shows our students how to reach their full potential and encourages their passion along the way. She inspires children's imaginations and fills young minds with virtues and values. She teaches our children how to cooperate with others and to overcome obstacles. Her colleagues describe Megan as being a great mother, a loyal friend, a great teaching partner, and she makes coming to work fun and keeps the team on track with her excellent organizational skills. Megan is a committed professional who dedicates her career to improve our school, community, and our next generation. Thank you, Megan, for helping our children dream big and for guiding the growth and development of our students. Congratulations. Bye. So I told Angie just to say thank you so I could say I'm honored, because there's only so many words you can say. But um, I'm truly thankful for this. Um, never in a million years did I think that I would get this award and have someone coming and looking for me to give me an award. Um, I heard my name on the walkie-talkie that they were looking for Mrs. Mosley, and I was like, what did I do? But um, So I'm just thankful to um, work in such a great school district with amazing colleagues who some of them I call my true friends, the ones that actually came tonight. And, um, and um, I love the administration, and I'm just honored, and thank you. Next, I'd like to ask Mrs. Peebler and Mrs. Susan Austin to come up, please. Uh, <laughs> as character Edwina, she reminds students 
of our school-wide expectations of being responsible, respectful, caring, problem-solving citizens that will make a difference in the world around them. She even made a special visit to our superintendent and assistant, su assistant superintendent this year to, show, to find out if they were being good characters. Susan Austin is a huge factor in our school's climate and we appreciate everything she does to make Shaw a fun place to learn and grow. I'd like to thank her husband John and her two children for sharing her with us every day. Thank you for all that you do in making Shaw a wonderful place to be. about 45 years ago because I began um, when I was about eight years old in our neighborhood. My friend had a chalkboard and we would gather my sisters, uh, my, my younger sister's friends together and we would play school. But interestingly, we wouldn't fight over who was going to be the teacher, but who was going to be the principal. Because in our mind, the principal had the power. They talked over the loudspeaker, and they got to interrupt the class whenever they wanted to. Um, so that really was the beginning. I also, when, when I think of the journey into education, I owe a lot to, uh, to my dad. Growing up in the church, um, he encouraged me at, at, a, at a young age to get involved, to be teaching Sunday school and to be teaching um, children's church. Uh, I was the first person in my family uh, to go to college, and really my husband um, had, had a lot to do with that. When, when we met and we were talking about getting married, he really encouraged me. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And he said, you know, you have this gift, you have this ability, and encouraged me to go back to school, helped pay it off, um, the, uh, some school loans so that, that I could continue on that. Um, when I started in Beaver Creek, I replaced the infamous Richard Little. I was uh, hired when he retired. He retired at the very last minute. So I literally uh, started school the day of new teacher orientation. I had no time really to prepare or, you know, to get a lot of things ready, uh, but just have to jump in. And I'll never forget, uh, after those first few days of school, driving home and just being in tears because I was just overwhelmed. What was I going to do? You know, I made it through the first couple of days, but now I have to start teaching. These kids are expecting something. And um, as I think about being an educator, it is such a difficult job because we do so much more than just merely give the academics. We're, we're, we're researchers, we're, we're doctors, we're surgeons, we're family therapists, we're counselors as we're working with children and trying to identify what their needs are and, and how, can we, how can we best meet those needs. And then when, um, I'll never forget teaching fourth grade, and the first time I got my value added scores, and my score was approaching average. And I looked at that and thought, wait, I'm not even an average teacher, I'm just, I'm just approaching average. And again, driving home in tears, and my husband saying to me, don't, don't worry about that. You, you know the type of teacher you are. You know what you're doing. So, you know, just go out there and, and, and continue doing the good things that you're doing. The next year, the only thing that changed was the student, same teacher. The next year, I was accomplished. So, to show that test scores aren't always what, what um, they appear to be. Um, the challenge of teaching students as well. I just have to tell two very quick stories to help you understand the challenge that we as educators face. One morning when I was teaching fifth grade, I had two boys who had been on flag duty in the winter time. And the boy came in and he said, Mrs. Austin, can I go see the nurse? I said, what do you mean can you go see the nurse? What happened? I hit my tongue. 
You hurt your tongue. What in the world? How did you hurt your tongue? I stuck my tongue on the flagpole. <laughs> I said, what ever gave you the idea to stick your tongue on the flagpole? Well, I was watching this show called Dumb and Dumber. I said, say no more. Say no more. I understand. Or the student who stood there with trash in his hand, and the trash can was right here, and he looked at me very seriously and said, what should I do with it? And to look at him and think, and so I shared this with a good friend of mine because all I could think of is that 50% of my evaluation is based on how this student performs. <laughs> and my friend said, oh dear, it stinks to be you. <laughs> but speaking of friends, and as people have already said, in this job, we are not in it alone. I am so grateful for my colleagues at Shaw who are willing to open up their classrooms and to allow us to come in and see what each other is doing to my third grade um, colleagues who are online looking and searching for those new ideas and who are willing to, to share that with one another. Um, so as I'm closing and I was thinking about everything that has brought me here to this place, I've thought of a couple of things. I mentioned several times that I broke down in tears and cried, and, and my husband always encouraged me to keep going. So I figure after 32 years of marriage, I should probably start listening to him and to really cherish and appreciate um, the friendships that we have and the people that are there to encourage us. And one thing that I always tell my students is go with what you know because whatever problem or situation you face, you have a lot of skills and a lot of ability. So trust yourself and go with what you know. Next, I would like to ask Supervisor for Student Nutrition, Connie Little, and Don Kaczynski to come forward, please. She's a member of the School Nutrition Association. 
and she is always a team player. Whenever there is a need in the department, she's the first one to volunteer to make sure a job is taken care of. She takes, once again, her education very seriously. She learns along the way. During her career with Beaver Creek Schools, she has been in many different buildings, Maine Elementary, Valley Elementary, Ferguson. She has taken that experience, and she has helped others learn from it, which is a wonderful asset to have in the department. She is always ensuring operations of our 10 schools and always there to support our 48 staff. And let me tell you, that's quite an accomplishment to do every day. She manages orders in our department, and let me tell you what an order looks like, a grocery bill looks like at the end of the month for our district. She helps manage that gigantic project every month. It's wonderful. Um, trust. Everyone in our department can trust John. Uh, Dawn, she is there all the time, no matter what. It is absolutely, hands down, um, a great comfort for all of our staff to know that Dawn is there to support them. She's a great leader. She's an amazing listener. She guides and she teaches. And with all of the changes that we have had in the National School Lunch Program, it has just been a great comfort to know that Dawn is there to help carry on the education that we need to have, not only for our staff, but to help educate our students about good, healthy choices, and also for our, our parents and our community as well. Uh, Don is always there in the support ring, and it is absolutely been, like I said, a pleasure. So, uh, without further ado, congratulations, Don, and thank you for all of your hard work. just a reflection of you. And that's how I feel about this reward. I'm just a reflection of all the hardworking staff in the Student Nutrition Department. Thank you. I'd like to ask our supervisor for transportation and buildings and grounds, Mr. Todd Scott as well as Patrick Vittori and Debbie Fogel to come forward, please. Uh, 
it's, it's been a pleasure to work for this school district. Uh, from the time I started training with Lindy, it made her nervous a few times. Get too close to the white line on the right side. The time Charlie asked me why I wanted this job, with 40 screaming kids behind me, and I said, I don't have to keep them, do I? He said, well, you got the right attitude. <laughs> but uh, I've, I've watched the children exceed in sports, show choir, and it's been a joy. And, uh, I'm really going to miss it. Thanks, everybody. Next is Miss Debbie Fogel. Debbie is, uh, has been selected and awarded our Outstanding Educator Award for the Transportation Department. And uh, I'm honored to be able to stand up here tonight and be able to present her. Debbie has only been with us uh, six short years, but um, that is, she is really one of those people that has risen to the top of her profession. And for those folks that uh, aren't sure whether a special needs assistant transportation is important for the education system or not, I will tell you that this lady exemplifies why that is true. Um, kids get their start every morning by the tone and smile of the face that first greets them. And oftentimes they go home the same way, with the smile and the mentality of the person that is helping them get off the bus and, and go home. Without fine folks like Debbie in transportation, um, education would suffer from not having that, that skill. And, and Debbie certainly exemplifies that skill. Um, each day, Debbie exhibits her kind and caring spirit for children. She assists the driver in meeting their every need on the school bus. And it was no surprise to me when she was nominated and selected as outstanding classified support staff. In years past, Debbie has served in the marching band uh, parent group for six years. She also volunteered in the ticket window for home football games. Debbie was a volunteer and helper in the classroom at Parkwood Elementary. And both of Debbie's sons uh, graduated from Beaver Creek High School. Debbie shows on a daily basis a bright light in a child's eye and her compassion and gentle spirit. She does the same with our staff. Thank you, Debbie, for what you do every day. You are touching lives and mentoring our most prized possessions, our children. Congratulations. I'd like to ask Ms. Lisa Walk and Sarah Hutchins to come join us, please. Everyone's leaving their notes on the podium. to be presenting this award to Sarah Hutchins this evening. I first met Sarah when she was graduating from the University of Dayton 
and interviewing in Beaver Creek. She was one of those people who just knew it was going to be phenomenal. Sarah was hired to teach at Parkwood Elementary School where she was highly respected. Sarah had grown up in St. Louis and she got a little bit homesick. So she went home to St. Louis to teach for a year. But, as sometimes happens, love brought her back to Dayton. In fact, Sarah married this sweet boy just a few months ago. Brian's out in the audience. When I caught wind of Sarah's return to the area, it was just as we were getting ready to open Tree by Elementary and we needed another intervention specialist. So I interviewed Sarah over the phone and snatched her up. She's been wonderful. I've had the privilege of watching Sarah teach over the past four years, and I have to say, she is truly one of the most patient individuals on this earth. She is always cheerful and never seems ruffled in any way. I don't know how she does. Sarah is amazing at reaching those students who have some unique challenges and help them to achieve success academically, behaviorally, and socially. Sarah maintains constant communication with other teachers and therapists who work with her students. She communicates with parents on a daily basis and is constantly researching and sharing ideas and insights with others. Sarah has a master's degree from Florida State University in special education with a focus on severe disabilities and autism, and she is currently pursuing another graduate degree in behavior analysis. She is an amazing Irish dancer and has competed all over the country. Sarah and her husband Ryan live in Kettering and enjoy running, hiking, and biking. Trayvine is fortunate to have Sarah Hudgens working with our kids. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you, Lisa. Um, yeah, like Lisa said, I started at Parkwood, and I just remember my first few years where um, I had no idea what I was doing and struggling figuring out where to start, what to do, and, um, you know, I just, Beaver Creek is an amazing place, and everybody's more is a family, and it's really a team effort. Um, I just remember those, those first few years, Dr. Westfeld would, you know, when she called me up to hire me, and she said, bring your running shoes and bring your lunch, but you're probably not going to have time to clean it because you're going to be so busy. Um, and I would be writing my IEPs and sending them off to Bobby Fiore, and then she'd edit them and send me back with all these red marks to correct them and make it better. Um, but now, you know, with all of that support and all of my mentors through the years, um, I'm really fortunate and very grateful to be back in Beaver Creek and um, with another great team of Trey Vine. Um, but I also just wanted to thank the amazing families that I work with and the staff that I work with and my husband who has been up late at night with me watching me Velcro and laminate all my materials. So I'm just very grateful for this and thank you very much. I would like to ask Mr. Uh, Dan Sweeterman, Principal of Valley Elementary School, and Ms. Patrice Wolf, and Corey Mazzaroli to come up, please. Good evening. Um, I have the privilege of uh, introducing uh, two just outstanding and, and wonderful women tonight. Um, I'll start with uh, with Patrice. Um, Mrs. Wolf, uh, I've been preparing for tonight. I was just thinking, you know, on the way over, you know, you know, what have I, you know, experienced with Patrice over in the four years um, that I've got a chance to work with her? And and I actually remember my first day in the building. Um, she was, uh, you know, first grade, um, of course, and um, just for the luck of the draw, she had uh, probably the most energetic class that I've ever seen in my life. Um, we, uh, I got to visit her classroom uh, almost daily, if not multiple times each day, 
uh, just to support and uh, you know walk through that and learn um, just what it is to you know be a principal uh, in an elementary building and uh, working with uh, first graders and kindergartners. So um, that's my first memory of Patrice, and it just sticks out in my mind because we had a lot of great conversations, a lot of laughs, and a lot of fun that uh, that first year. Um, Patrice has been a part of the district uh, for 22 years. Uh, 17 of those have been at Valley. Um, Patrice is a very loving, uh, caring uh, person. You know, she has had many siblings and families, um, you know, entire siblings go through her classroom, and it's it's just so special to see her reach out to those families um, and follow those kids along. And you know, she provides things that, you know, that she sees that they may need um, all the way through elementary and beyond, not just, you know, the one year that, that they're in her room. Um, I personally, you know, have a lot of thanks to uh, Patrice for uh, being on the building leadership team um, and providing, you know, uh, calmness to that team and, and especially, you know, my first few years uh, in Valley. Uh, there's been a lot of changes with, you know, evaluation, you know, changes for the state and uh, third grade guarantees and, you know, all of our district initiatives and she's helped to help to help me through for the primary grade levels, help me get through the, to help them out. Um, she also uh, has really provided a lot of great expectations and just the history of Valley um, to a lot of the new staff members that have joined, um, you know, over the last few years, so I really appreciate that as well. Uh, lastly, uh, it, it was, you know, thinking in this, I was thinking about this before um, we had a retirement party for Patrice, and, you know, it takes a special person to teach, you know, the primary grade levels. Um, Patrice taught reading recovery and Title I uh, before she became a kindergarten teacher and then a first grade teacher, and, uh, it's just, I was reflecting on that and just thinking about, you know, 17 years in Valley and just how many adults are in the community, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of adults in the community that, you know, can trace their um, learning of, you know, just basic skills, education and reading uh, to, to Patrice. So I just think that is just something special uh, that, you know, is just outstanding. And I, you know, just envy. So congratulations, Patrice, and I wish you well. evaluation that I needed to do for teaching for teachers this year and so I was very excited about that and you know being a former science teacher um, it was great to get the lesson plan and she was going to be doing a stem activity um, with her first graders and which I thought was very brave because um, I could I've seen it with eighth graders so I can't imagine first grade um, but she 
it was, you know, it was just funny that you know, the kids are going through and they have their um, cups of a white powder in front of them. And they're going to be, you know, mixing some things together and it'll turn into kind of like a paste and, you know, things like that. And, and uh, you know, about halfway through, one of the kids goes, you know, you know, what is this? And another kid goes, it's powdered sugar, you can eat it. <laughs> And Corey's face um, turned completely white, um, and luckily no one did eat it. It was it was plaster of Paris, but um, she stopped it before that. And uh, you know the kids had a great you know great activity with that, and it was uh, uh, it was very I think it was it was in a Friday afternoon or something. So it was it was a great way to end the day, and it just you know provided you know a story that um, I would never forget. Corey truly is someone that has, uh, that starts each and every day with a smile. Uh, when you walk into her room, uh, you can just feel the positive energy. Uh, you can feel, you know, the anticipation from the kids that you know we're going to learn something new, uh, and it's just it's just a wonderful place to walk into and feel. Um, you know, you can tell that you know just talking with the kids and how they talk about you know Corey, you know, they truly feel loved. Um, you know, through their confidence in what they're learning and what they can tell you, and just their um, their smiles. I mean, you can tell that they are they are truly happy to be there. Um, Corey is also someone that takes great pride in doing everything she can for her students. Um, you know, it, it's it's very common. Um, almost every day or every year um, that she's got five to six different levels of reading groups. She's got kids going, you know, rotating all over. Um, and, you know, she takes it, you know, unrightfully personal and, you know, maybe they're not moving along as, as quickly as she thinks they should be. Um, which just shows how much that she cares and how much uh, ownership she takes in, in for them being successful. Uh, lastly, you know, it's it's pretty telling when uh, you have, I have actually I have numerous kindergartners that have asked to be in her classroom for next year. But I have one little guy that he, come, he has come up to me every single day after, uh, at release, um, as they're getting on the buses and he walks up to me. And it's been almost three months now, every single day. Um, and he's like, can I be in Mrs. Massarelli's class next year? You know, and now he's asked, have you made the list yet? <laughs> so. Um, I'm afraid of not putting them in her class now, so we'll see. But um, there's not a more absorbing person, and congratulations. instilled in me um, to be a teacher and to love kids 
and so they are just on my mind constantly this past week. Um, I just want to tell a little story about my grandmother. Actually, this kind of goes back to last April when um, things were coming towards an end with my mom. And um, this man flew up from Florida, who my mom had become like a big sister to. He had had my grandmother as a fourth grader. And he wanted to see my mom one more time. And it was amazing to sit and listen to him. I had always heard stories about my grandmother and what an amazing teacher she was. And he told the story of how he, he came from a very, very poor family, lots of kids. Nobody had gone to college. Nobody had furthered their education. It wasn't a lot of value in it from home. But she saw something in him. She took him under her wing. She encouraged him to dream, to think of what he could do with his life, and stuck with him all through his schooling and encouraging, find a way to get to college. And he taught himself how to be a place kicker. And he got a full ride scholarship to University of Michigan. Sorry if you're Ohio State fan. But he got full ride. Um, he told this whole story about they're at the Rose Bowl and they're getting ready to take the field and there's a flower delivery and it's from his fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Norris, wishing him luck and saying how proud she was of him. And that's the kind of teacher she was. She loved her kids and I feel like that's been instilled in me and I just try to love these kids every day, um, no matter what their challenges are and what they're um, going through in their own lives. Um, every single one of them is one of my kids forever. And um, I just try to kind of carry on her legacy. Um, inspire these kids every day. Um, I try to have a blast teaching them all kinds of different ways. <laughs> um, hoping they'll remember some of the things they learned in first grade. And just finding the blessing in every day. Um, I know that my mom and my grandmother are with me every day in the classroom. And I know they're here right now. So thank you again to the board and to the whole community. Um, it's a privilege to be here and just an honor to be recognized for doing something I just truly love to do. So thank you. Next, I'd like to ask uh, Alex Riggs uh, from our preschool and Ms. Kelly Jack to come forward. Kelly Jack is the Outstanding Educator for the Beaver Creek Preschool Center. Kelly has worked in Beaver Creek City Schools as a preschool intervention specialist since 2010 when she graduated from the University of Dayton and she earned her master's degree in 2013. Kelly is married to Caleb and they have a sweet two-year-old son Dominic and outside of her role at the preschool center Kelly actually teaches education students as an adjunct instructor at the University of Dayton. Within the school system, Kelly really has a passion for character education and for health and wellness. And she actually serves on district committees for both of these subjects. And she brings initiatives to the preschool that we are all grateful for. Um, and then when I just think about Mrs. Jack as a teacher, I really picture her loving classroom environment. She prioritizes empathy, friendship, and caring for others. And these are the values that she instills in her students. Her classroom is really a special place. Her kids really care about each other, and they really become like a family over the year. And it's really awesome. Uh, Mrs. Jack really takes pride in developing strong relationships with her students, and then also with their families. Uh, preschool is often a family's first experience with a school district, and in some cases for us with special education. Um, this can be an overwhelming experience for parents. And Mrs. Jack really walks parents through every step of the way, and she ensures they are comfortable and confident that their very young children will be well cared for during their preschool days. By the end of the year, parents feel so safe with Mrs. Jack that they don't want her kids to leave their class. <laughs> they make quite a jump over the year. 
Um, in recent years, Mrs. Jack has been tasked with educating some students with unique and significant medical and behavioral needs. Uh, she has really risen to this challenge and has surpassed all expectations. Mrs. Jack connects with these students on a deep level and they really find a special place in her heart. Um, and on that note, you have probably all realized by now that Mrs. Jack has a special place in our hearts as a preschool staff. And I just want to thank you for all that you do. And just congratulations. And you do have a very special visitor who also wanted to meet you up on stage. One of Mrs. Jack's students this year, Ella. Well, that was Ella, and I will talk about her here in just a minute. But it's with great pleasure to stand before you tonight to accept this award. I would first like to thank my family. My parents always told me what to do, to do what makes me happy, to work hard, stay focused, and to give it my all. It's a foundation that they have instilled in me since birth, and I am ever grateful. My goal has always been to teach the same skill to my students. I have said over and over that I feel strongly that children cannot learn unless they are able to accept one another, respect their peers and adults, and work together. That is the very first skill we work on each year. Sometimes it takes a full school year, and sometimes it takes a week. I thank my parents who have instilled this in my foundation and to my everyday teaching. I want to thank my amazing husband, Caleb. Caleb has been by my side since we were freshmen in high school. He has been through it all with me. He has supported me along each and every path, and has been pretty great at understanding all of the extra items in the shopping cart each week. Or digging through freezers to make sure we get the right popsicles for family fun day. And for being the best dad ever to our amazing little man, Dominic. I'm lucky to come home each night and know that we will continue to have fun. I also want to thank my amazing sisters and mother-in-law who all work in the schools as well. They have been influential in my decision making as well as an understanding year. I'd like to thank the entire preschool staff. If you ever want to know what it's like to work with the most supportive set of people, come on over. It amazes me how everyone just steps in and helps in times of need, not just within the classroom, but as well as in our own lives. They were there for my wedding day, for the birth of my baby, and to support me during times of loss. And thank you to the students and the families I have worked with over the years. All of you have truly influenced me in many ways. Some ask what I do as a preschool teacher. I'm lucky enough to see children talk for the first time, walk for the first time, lend a hand to a peer in need, and help families feel safe leaving their child in the school setting, and even support a kid fighting cancer like I've never seen before. You never know what a year will bring, and sometimes it feels like the hardest job ever. And then you stop and look, and you see all their little tiny smiles. This year was amazing watching my student Ella, who you just met, fight her little heart out as she battled cancer. We teach children to stand up for themselves, and this little four-year-old is the definition of bold. She stood right in front of the class and defended her beautiful bald head, the port in her chest, and the annoying drain hanging from her side, which we held in the bathroom many days. She refused to accept a single negative word from anyone. Today, Ella left my classroom, really excited because she could finally lay on the scooters on her belly and not have to sit on them like every, like, so she could finally run around like everybody else. She no longer has a port in her chest. She has hair on her head. And she no longer has that annoying drain. I'm proud and honored to say, Ella, that you taught me more than I'll ever teach our children. Lastly, I must say thank you to my right-hand woman, Jenny Wilkins. I would have her stand up here with me, but she wouldn't have slept for a month. <laughs> Where do I even begin? I truly couldn't do this day in and day out without you. My husband often asks at night, who on earth are you still talking to? And it's Jenny. Yes, we spend all day long together, but it's never enough. Jenny, thank you for all your smiles, laughter, 
hugs, tears, and of course, the get her done. <laughs> Back in uh, 2004, I had the opportunity to become the principal at Fairbrook Elementary School, and um, Mrs. Beaver, who was the outgoing principal at the time, and was helping me transition into that job, said something to me that I'll never forget. She said, Darren, whenever you're working here in Beaver Creek City Schools, you have to remember, Fairbrook first. <laughs> And I found it really ironic that I got a phone call from Joelle Mangan, who's the principal there now, a couple days ago, and said, Darren, Darren, please, can you ask Fairbrook to go last because we have Darren graduation. And I, it was really hard for me, Joelle, to, uh, to have Fair, Fairbrook last when, when I pledged in my heart it would always be Fairbrook first. So with, with that, I asked Joelle, Gina Place, Kathy Whitaker, and David Miller to please come forward. Outstanding Educator of the Year. Mr. David Miller began his teaching career first in California and then, to our benefit, David moved his family to Beaver Creek, Ohio and began teaching at Fairbrook Elementary in 2005. He has been providing an outstanding education to our fourth graders and our fifth graders over the years. David received his bachelor's degree in liberal studies from California, California Polytechnic University in Pomona, California and a Master's in Curriculum Development from Nova, Nova Southeastern University in 2007. David is married to his beautiful wife, jo Jody, and they have three children, Christian, Sam, and Molly. This award for David is much deserved. David was nominated by a colleague who noted, David is an exceptional communicator with parents. He consistently sends home emails to student parents to inform them of their child's progress. He is consistently looking for new ways to personally connect with each student. For example, he's used his own time to attend the soccer games of some of his students. David is a professional who is easy to work with and is always willing to help a colleague with a problem. He meets frequently with his team members to discuss students who are needing help or who are having difficulties. And then from a parent nomination, he has gone the extra mile to make sure all of his students are taken care of and understand the material. He is full of empathy and a love for education. And finally, from another parent who nominated Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller led his students well, both academically and socially, emotionally. My daughter always felt she could talk to him if she was struggling with an assignment or an area of study, and he would take the extra time she needed to understand the concept. His classroom has great energy. He's very positive, encourages collaboration, and made learning fun. As you can see, not only is David an outstanding teacher, ensuring that each child makes academic growth in all areas, he has, a, he has a desire to improve our children by improving their emotional life. He has dedicated his career to improving our school, community, and world. David has led our students and staff with collecting for UNICEF, participating as one of our leaders for our character education committee, on our district-wide math committee, as well as participating on our district local professional development committee. David works very hard to establish relationships with his students and their families. I often see him on the playground talking with individual students about problems they may have, celebrations they may be experiencing, or providing them the encouragement when they feel like they aren't doing as well as they should. Our school mission is that Fairbrook is a safe and supportive environment where students are motivated to positively impact our world. David is a perfect example of a teacher that lives that mission. Congratulations, David. And I often think about how fortunate I've been. And 
in the past, I was fortunate enough to, to win another accolade. And at that time, I was so focused on what I was gonna say, I kind of forgot to thank some people. So the first thing is I wanna thank my lovely wife, who you have supported me and, and given me um, all the time I need to be the best educator I possibly can be. Uh, I appreciate all your love for my children and our children, and, and for you allowing me to be uh, my best teacher that I can be. Um, she's not here, so would you please tell her that I said that? Facebook. <laughs> Okay, because I missed it last time. Um, I also forgot to thank the people that sponsored this, which is basically all of Beaver Creek, and I really appreciate that, and the parents, the kind words that they've said to me. And um, I, there was other things that I forgot, but I forgot what I forgot last time, so it's great. I thank my Fairbrook family, so I'll thank you again. Um, the Sharks, Jack, that was pretty cool. There was a little shout out there. Um, that's a long story. Uh, and, you know, I think I think my other people too as well along the way, and, and there's just so many people to thank. But another person that I really forgot to thank, and I did thank my parents. My parents are both educators. My father unfortunately passed away in November, um, so this is very special to me to win this um, and to to get this nomination and this award. Um, it is really special, and I do dedicate this to him. And I thanked him many times for all the wonderful things he did for me. And as a great educator himself, I know through osmosis I've learned a lot. Um, but, you know, it, it really goes back to, for me, someone who I've forgotten to thank. And I never thanked her while she was alive. And it was my fourth grade teacher, um, Mrs. Dickinson. And I really, at that time, you really didn't find your teacher's first name. It was like disrespectful to know the first name of the teacher. Now the kids all want to know and they want to know your age and it's okay. But she was such a wonderful and kind and gentle lady. Um, she did so many amazing things for me, and I'll always remember that. And I know today, when kids um, remember their teachers, it seems like they always remember the um, high school teachers and the ones that were really um, the most recent teachers that they had. But for me, it was an elementary teacher, and I've ended up teaching elementary. I taught uh, fourth grade for many years, and now fifth grade. And Mrs. Dickinson, you know, I never got the chance to thank you for um, being a great teacher. And I remember she took me to, uh, after a play that I did, and I'm sure I did a horrible job, but she loved me anyways for doing it. And she took me to, uh, and a couple of friends in the play, and she took every kid in the play to, for, uh, Frisch's Big Boy, it was, big, it was uh, Bob's Big Boy in California, took me to the Frisch's Big Boy, and we got to get whatever ice cream you wanted for lunch. I don't think we ate lunch, it was just like a big ice cream. Uh, Sunday or whatever we had, and it was just amazing how she touched and, and allowed us to feel special. Um, and I hope that she inspired me to be that kind of teacher that cares about the children no matter what, and no matter what uh, difficulties they have, and no matter how challenging they can be. Um, she was just a very special person in my life, and I, and I definitely thank her. I wish I had thanked her when she was alive. And I want to thank the parents who nominate the teachers for this. I want to thank the parents who write notes at the end of the year and at Christmas and at other times thanking us teachers for what we do because, you know, we can win these awards, but those awards come at just the right moments. Those are the awards, those little notes from parents and from kids for that matter. You know, I'm carrying a note from one of my students in my pocket as I was looking for, I have my, my Miss Dickinson's obituary somewhere in my room. I couldn't find it to bring it tonight, but I found notes from my students that I've kept, and those little notes and mementos and those letters from the parents mean so much. So keep sending them, kids. Keep giving those to your teachers' parents um, because we really appreciate those. And again, thank you all.
All righty. Well, as much as it was a true pleasure to um, talk a little bit about David, it is with a little bit of sadness in my heart that I must go on. I'm going to begin by speaking about Mrs. Place. Mrs. Place received her undergraduate degree at Bowling Green State University in 1981. She began her teaching career at Lipsick Elementary in Lipsick, Ohio. She taught there for one year, followed by four years at Churchill Elementary in Glen Ellen, Illinois. In 1982, Mrs. Place was hired by Mr. Stephen Huff, I believe, to teach um, students with special needs. Later, Mrs. Place began teaching fourth grade. Mrs. Place is going to enjoy her retirement with her husband Tracy and their three sons. Gina is known around the building as a fabulous singer and dancer. She has shown these talents multiple times during our annual Christmas celebration and opening day skits. Mrs. Place is known as the person who is rock solid. Someone you can turn to when you need help. Someone who will listen and give you an objective opinion. And someone who is always willing to have some fun. Mrs. Place, we will miss you more than you can imagine. I'm not sure who will take your place singing, and to be truthful, I'm a little worried about how we will sound now that you won't be here to keep us in tune. So congratulations on your retirement, Mrs. Place. Well, I have to admit, I'm very excited and ready to retire after 35 years, but I'm going to miss all the people that I work with, so here's my shout out to my fun Fairbrook family. <laughs> Mrs. Whitaker began working in education in Bellbrook as a special needs assistant. Today, Mrs. Whitaker is retiring after five years as our IMC technician. Prior to serving as our IMC tech, she worked as a special needs assistant and teacher's assistant with her partner, Karen Gilley, at Fairbrook. In total, Mrs. Whitaker has spent 27 years at Fairbrook Elementary School. Upon retiring, Mrs. Whitaker plans to join her to spend her time with her husband, Doug, her two sons, and her grandchildren. In June, they are taking a big cruise, she informed me, and I think she cannot wait to do that. When thinking of Mrs. Whitaker, I believe she is one of the kindest people I've ever met. She is always smiling, and one can see that she loves children unconditionally. I'm so grateful to have an opportunity to work with Kathy. She said these past five years have given her the opportunity to work in the best job in the building, and because she is the nicest person I think I know, I can't think of a better person to have that honor. Congratulations, Kathy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Board of Education and Administrators, for this recognition. Um, thank you, Joel, for those kind words. Um, it was a hard decision to retire, and I kept asking my husband for advice, and he just said, do whatever you want to do, he support me. Um, and once I made the decision, I realized um, it's okay to leave a job that you love. In fact, it's the best to be able to say that I'm retiring from a job that I absolutely love. And I love my Fairbrook family so much. And I won't be leaving them because I'll be back. I'll be, we're, we're friends, so I'll be there forever. And I love the Fairbrook kids, and they know it. I tell them all the time, I love my kids, I love my Fairbrook kids. And the fifth graders look at me, and they just kind of smile, and I say, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it, but I say it. I love them all, and I do. Um, couldn't ask for a better job, and I just thank you so much for, um, thank you Beaver Creek Schools for the opportunity, and um, thanks Fairbrook friends for being here. everyone for attending this evening uh, for the recognitions, our retirees, our outstanding educators, and our outstanding support staff. And uh, we're going to go into a five minute recess. I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Regano uh, for that action. And I do remind our, our uh, outstanding educator and support personnel award winners 
Um, we have the opportunity for those professional photographs to be taken. So when we go into recess, you can come join us up behind the stage, and um, the photographer is here to help with that. Before I let you come up here, I would like to thank our teachers and our support staff. I tell them all the time, we have the best teachers, the best support staff of any school system. It's true. There's no doubt about it. You are so special. You know what? When people outside our district are saying that about you, I just want to tell you this before you all leave. Last night I was here at Maine for the Amuse Machine performance, which by the way was outstanding. And the director, Michael Lippert, director of Amuse, who worked with these kids all year, made the statement to everybody in the audience that he worked with like 28 schools this year. And the school system that stood out, that did the best, that put the teachers, was Beaver Creek City Schools. That, I mean, that just says it all for us people. You are the glue that keeps us together. You are what makes Beaver Creek special because you see the potential in our kids sometimes that they don't see. So God bless you all. Thank you all, the support staff, our fabulous teachers, our administrators. Thank you for what you do for our little beavers. Because that's what I call them. They're all my little beavers. And you're my big beavers. So thank you all. God bless you all. And you know what? After the break, I know some of you, we're not asking you to leave, but I know some of you, I understand, are going to go out and celebrate, and deservedly so. So please, before you leave, please come up and have your pictures taken. And thank you all for being here tonight. Students don't start band in sixth grade, 
they are likely to never join, and if they are forced to stop in a following year, they are unlikely to rejoin. In 20 years, I've been around this program for more than 20 years, the band program has never had such a devastating drop in enrollment. Music programs live or die on two things, quality, passionate teachers, and school policies and scheduling. I'll be blunt, it appears that the school board hired new administrators who in their first year had put in place or let policies be put in place that will immediately dismantle 20 years of progress in a nationally recognized program. This coming year, the high school will field the largest band in district has ever had. Again, it will continue to be the largest in the area with a smaller staff, now I hear even smaller. The middle school enrollment issue will have an impact starting the following year when the band will significantly shrink for the first time in decades. When I discussed this with Jason Phoenix, his response in short was that it was simply to the student choice and offered no apparent interest in changing any policy to address the issue. A 40% drop in enrollment in a single year due to student choice alone is just not true. I followed up in an email asking for further details and have seen no response. The mantra of doing what's best for students seems to have been lost. Policies that were in place this year prohibited fifth graders from understanding how band works. Simple things like not needing experience, not needing an instrument day one, but that they are able to do other activities and that there are ways to handle the expense weren't explained at all. It appears that major policy and scheduling changes were put in place without realizing the full impact. What will it take to make music man mandatory elective? I had no idea that music education courses no longer required at the middle school and only a single arts course is required during our uh, high school. The, band Koi is having, the, the Koi Band is having their spring concert as we speak and many are not aware that not only will next year be significantly smaller, they are also losing one of their teachers. Not sure what, how much time I have left. I do have a positive note um, and just another example of why I stick around. Uh, the band recently returned from a short trip to Norfolk uh, to participate in the NATO Festival. Uh, this is the first time in a long time that uh, the band has traveled with more than just the marching band. Um, but that's not really what makes the band different. They, they had all had great performances. If you hadn't heard, the truck broke down. Uh, in, in fact, uh, it's been a whole other week uh, being fixed down there. But that put in motion crazy logistics and very quick and organized chaos led by students to get 260 kids in uniform on buses, hour, hour out to the truck, unloaded instruments, back onto the buses, an hour back uh, to the parade route, all ready to go uh, before a step, of, step off time of 10 a.m. Let's just say the tour guides and the parade officials uh, had, didn't think there was any chance that you make it happen. This, along with the high expectations the program already sets, is above and beyond what our band uh, makes a difference every day. Uh, in conclusion, I ask that the school board take an immediate interest in the enrollment issue, make some music education mandatory, and work to make changes that are best for the students.
But anyway, thank you for giving me the opportunity to um, speak to you tonight about the five-year forecast. As you know, we have to have one uh, prepared for October of every year and for May of every year. And uh, so this one is the update to the forecast that we did in, in um, October. Another thing you're going to see is you'll see typically the same slides as I usually do there. Just they tell you where we're at as of this point in time. But one of the things we put in here that changes the slide presentation is the a uh, lot of comparison data that we had a study done. And it will compare three different things. It'll compare um, the Ohio Department of Education, 20 similar districts to Beaver Creek. So you'll be able to see not only where we're at in the five-year forecast and where our finances are, but you're going to be able to see with respect to other districts, similar districts, you'll be able to see where we are. You'll also be able to see um, peer districts, which is kind of like Friday Night Football districts, and then Ohio Average. The first slide that uh, I want to show you, it's a little blurry up there, but this is one of our similar districts, and it's talking about the revenues per pupil. Um, the one thing that stood out to me in the comparison report that we had uh, compiled is that um, when we're looking at per pupil totals, uh, these comparisons mean something, especially when you start looking at um, our expenditures, and you'll see further into the slideshow that, um, and you probably will also recall from prior uh, presentations, that our expenditures are driven by our salaries and wages and things of that nature. Um, when you look at how much money we're bringing in per pupil, you will see that our district is the lowest compared to Ohio averages, similar districts, and peer districts. Our general revenues versus expenditures without the levy renewal, and that was the, um, it's a, the emergency levy that we are turning into a substitute emergency levy that we ran in May. Uh, when the levy expires, you can see um, we are starting to go into some deficit situations in 19. The cash balance is positive through 19 if the levy is not renewed, um, and it's the $10.4 million levy, and of course, we all know it'll go right back on the ballot in um, November. And if the rev levy is renewed, um, then we go into a deficit balance ending in um, 20. So, it's I'm sorry, I'm trying to get used to this one. Our ending cash balance, as you can see, it does show some deficits out here in 20 and 21. And you know, it's just the cycle of how schools are funded. When you get new money, you go to the levy, the ballot, and you get voters to um, vote in new money, then you'll have a surplus for a number of years for as long as you expect that levy to last. Usually at least four or five years you want the levy to last. So then you come down to the end of that levy and you'll start seeing deficits in your five-year forecast. We are starting to run into that where we passed our new money back in November of 14. And so we're getting out to 20 and 21. You will see that we will start needing to go after new money probably next year. Our ending cash balance with levy renewals. In the orange bar, you will see that's the 60-day rate, cash rate ratio that we try to maintain. We start going underneath that ratio in 19. Even with the assumption of a levy renewal, again, we're still going to need um, additional funding. Our tax rates and values, what that will drive home is commercial and industrial is a very small portion of how we fund our schools in Beaver Creek. We are virtually residential and very little agricultural. So with residential income being virtually how we fund our schools, that's an important piece to think about when we start also looking at what types of revenue we get. Our average daily membership is how we get funded by the state, how many students come. And this shows why our similar districts were just a tad bit above them on our, our student totals and our peer groups are a little higher. The Ohio average, most districts are smaller than we are. 
So we look at our local revenue per pupil. There are three different um, slot types of slides I want to show you. You'll see local revenue per pupil, you're going to see state revenue per pupil, and you'll see federal revenues per pupil. Um, the local revenue per pupil on the top 20 districts, you can see here that we are um, in the middle. We're going to be towards you know, the lower quartile and the um, local revenue per pupil on the top 20. The peer groups, again, we're not at the top, we're pretty much in the middle of, of that, how, how we are funded, our local revenue per pupil. Um, then you go into our revenue sources. One thing that jumps out here, again, it hits home what we saw before on the tax rates, but our local funding is 76%, our state funding is 24%. That says that the state of Ohio is not necessarily trying to be a, a major partner in funding our schools. Our local taxpayers are responsible for that. And of the types of taxes that we can get locally, it's mainly residential. So it's mainly parents, it's mainly grandparents, it's mainly the folks who own the homes in our district. We didn't have a lot of commercial and industrial. We didn't have a lot of um, any other type. Right here, it's residential. We didn't have agricultural, industrial, commercial so much. We have some, but the burden is on our local taxpayer in our district. Uh, revenue, so that our state revenue per pupil, very low. We're on a lower quartile. Again, they're not trying to partner with us like they are with some other districts. And on um, the football Friday night group, our peer group, we're at, we're at the bottom. Federal revenue, we have pretty much the same story. federal revenue for people, again, lower quartiles. And this is the reason. It's because our median resident income is at the top in comparison. So when the funding formula is at the state and at the feds and at the, at the, at the uh, levels of how we're going to get funded depend upon local income and, and local wealth, um, that, that impacts our income. Our median resident income is um, basically, if you have the means, we're going to ask you to, you know, support your own schools. The number of students we have right there, in, we're in 7258 ADM. And our challenges to our operating re revenue is that on the state funding, we're on the formula. And um, so we have to think in terms of how the state's funding is working. Uh, right now we know the state is starting to run into some projection and budget problems. When we added all day kindergarten, we became the formula district. Our ADM may go up more, um, depending on if our enrollment and new growth or new students are, it depends on who's buying the new homes. Is it our current students that are just moving from this house to that, the new houses, or are we really gonna gain people from outside of Beaver Creek to come here and live. And those types of, of data are not necessarily available yet. We just know that we have a lot of houses that are being um, okay to uh, build. We do have two biennium budgets in this five-year forecast, so there is some uncertainty with when we try to project. And the state of Ohio revenue is not as strong now as it has been, so we don't know what the future is there. Our $10.4 million emergency levy does need to be renewed, and that is a concern since we've already put it on once and it didn't pass. We still have three additional tries before it would be um, expired. So now looking at the expenditure side, we have um, predominantly wages and benefits because we're a service industry. So we're 81% salaries and benefits. Our expenditures per pupil are the lowest. They're right with Ohio average. The similar um, districts are higher and so is the pure district. So on the revenue per pupil, we were low. On, expen on expenditures per pupil, we are low. Um, that's starting to pose a little bit of a financial problem for us on the revenue side. Uh, our students per teacher, that's why you will see right here we, we do have more students per teacher than our, our peers and our similars and the Ohio average. 
simply put, we just have less revenue to deal with. We have less revenue to, to utilize, less resources. And that, when you don't have the money, because you have low revenue per pupil, you're obviously going to have low expenditures per pupil. And if you're, it depends on whose eyes you're viewing this view through. If you've got the eyes of a teacher, you're saying, wow, you know, I've got so many students in my classroom, or if you're a parent, wow, there's a lot of students in the classroom. If you're a taxpayer, you're like, wow, look how much you're doing with, you know, the money you've been given, you know? Um, so those are the types of things that all of us have to balance as we start thinking in terms of new money, new levies. Teacher's average salary, again, depends on who you're looking at the lens through. If you're a teacher and you're in the bottom quartile, um, that might be a little bit different than what the taxpayers think. So, our general fund expenditures by object. This tells you when we were um, increasing the fall day kindergarten, we increased for enrollment, so you can see some expenses going up. And by nature of how uh, wages and benefits, especially, um, they do increase. And. Uh, it's always interesting when we're putting on a levy, we still have some people out there that think taxes, their tax bill should go down. Not quite understanding how that is when costs go up, but you know, um, these are some things we have to talk about. Our total, our district total expenditure per people, again, very low. If you're a taxpayer, you're saying that's great, you know, a lot of bang for the buck. We have a good story. We are doing a lot with what we've been given. And when you want to look at our, ex our administrative expenditure for people, we're at the very bottom as well. Beaver Creek is down there. Same thing with our administrative for people on our peer groups. Um, as the period, previous graph noted, we see our ending balance in the negative of 20, even if the $10.4 million emergency levy is renewed. Um, the actual state aid formula shows our projections were on target, but our and our staffing plan, we have a staffing plan that is a valuable too, tool that we're using to forecast. We're actually being able to start to see trends on what types of um, folks we are starting to hire and, and how many people we need. And, and a lot of unfunded mandates come to us through um, special education law and it requires us to continue to hire people as we get certain students into our district, they have to be serviced. So we're starting to actually be able to project that better through our staffing plan. And um, it also, the expenditures require us to d discuss how much we need for new money and millage in November of 2018. Some discussions we need. This is a good story too because it shows the return on investment because ultimately the investment is what are we what are we getting for our money? What are the results? How are our students performing? Our four-year graduation rate, we are at the top. We are higher than the Ohio average, we're higher than the peer groups, we're higher than the similar districts. We are doing our job. The same thing with the ACT percentile. Ohio, peer, similar, our district. So as far as doing more with less, I think the data would support that we are definitely doing more with less. And our performance index, again, we're above the peers in Ohio and right neck and neck with our similars. So um, thank you for this opportunity to share this information with you tonight. And um, as, as always, I mean, we're continuing to monitor continually to um, put the information out there every month to you guys and uh, if there are any questions I'll be glad to take it at this time. The amended certificate of estimated resources 
is updated to reflect the new five-year forecast balances in our April 17 financial reports. Um, again, we are just looking at um, staying right within our budgeted, what we had projected. We are not seeing any problems in, in, in that five-year, or in that monthly, those monthly balances. We, um, I, again, we're continuing to monitor that but we do not see any problems at this time being able to move forward as we had projected. We did make a few updates in the five year, but within the five year, as we've updated it, I think we're gonna be on target. Okay, again, Mr. Drucker, I, I certainly sit here Truly impressed. Appreciate the excellent explanation that you've offered on the five-year forecast. But in particular, I'd like to mention that since the fiscal year runs from July 1st uh, through June 30th, uh, if my math is correct, and I was not a math teacher, we're five-sixths of the way through the fiscal year, and your projections as of the end of April on the revenue side coming in at 99.26% correct, and on the expense side, at 99.65%. I don't know how you do it, so fantastic job. She does it because she's the best there is. Thank you, Mrs. Worker. Is there any, are there any other discussions on this? Would you please call the vote? Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Hunt? Yes. Ms. Rivano? Yes. Motion carries. I'm launching new, launch new business, so I'm going to need a motion and a second to approve the following employment, salary changes, leaves of absence, terminations, job descriptions. Beaver Creek High School graduating class of 2017. Approval of the dark fiber service contract, 2017 summer school dates and fees, and the approval of NEOLA policy updates. Waiving a first reading, see that in the, see the binder. We need a motion or a second. Yeah, just a couple items I want to cover. First of all, item B is our uh, graduating class of 2017. I did some quick math as well, and it looks as though we have about 592 students uh, that are listed. So uh, we're very excited for that event on the 27th, and I'm very excited to uh, see our graduating class go across the stage. Um, item C, I would like to uh, commend uh, Mike Schumann. Um, you know, Mike is always busy technology issues and, and keeping our district up and running and uh, this is a great opportunity for our district to, to really move forward with Mabeka or through Mabeka. Right now uh, it looks to save us this contract approximately about $260,000 and if we're able to go through E-rate e it should save us approximately $500,000 so that is just something Mike has been working in on the side there so I want to commend him for all the work that he does, we're very fortunate to have him lead that department. And then you'll notice item E uh, is approval of the OLA updates, and there, I'm asking for a waiving of this, of some of, some of these policies. Uh, right now we're looking at seven policies, and I will email these all out to you, but I just want to kind of give you what these seven policies are. We felt it was imperative to get these into place very quickly. Three of those deal with weapons, uh, one deals with student records, another one with public records because we will begin dealing with student and public records. And then the other two uh, deal with employment as we start heading into employment season. So these are updates that we want to get into place. Uh, the rest of these, we will 
email, or I will email these all out to you for your review, and then we'll be asking for approval on the rest of these that we feel we can wait on. That concludes new business. Any discussion? Okay, you yeah, vote, please. Ms. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Ms. Regano? Yes. Mr. Harris? Okay, we have the superintendent's report. Passing the mic. Uh, again, this is just an item as we get ready to go for our next update through NEOLA. I will be sending these policies out to the board uh, for the first reading of those, and then we would ask for approval back in June uh, for this set. Okay, and we're into um, announcements. On the next Board of Education meeting, it's going to be a work session on May 24th. 6.30 in the Board Administration Building. The last day of school, well, it's coming up May 24th. That's hard to believe. Um, the class of 2007 graduation ceremony will be May 27th at 9 a.m. at the Wright State's Nutter Center. And the next Board of Education meeting in June will be June 15th, 6.30 in the Board Administration Building. And we're now into Board comments. We'll start with Mrs. Hunt. Uh, just excited to be here to see all of our educators and staff members honored. Um, in particular, the, the ones from Fairbrook. Uh, my kids go to Fairbrook and now Ankeny. Um, all three of those individuals from Fairbrook were kid, people that have dramatically in, impacted my kids' lives. So, uh, Mr. Miller, I was one of the parents that nominated him. He had multiple nominations. Um, so I just am really grateful to all of our staff, but those those three individuals in particular who have taken the time to really invest in my kids and all the kids at Fairbrook. Um, looking forward to graduation and seeing all of the kids across the stage. Um, it's really exciting to, to be a part of that day. So thank you to uh, everyone for being here. Okay, thank you. I'd like to thank Mr. Schwederman for putting together the program for the retiring staff members outstanding educators uh, that was excellent and it means so much uh, to those individuals and to everyone in the school district so thank you so much for putting that together I'd also like to recognize from an athletic standpoint our spring sports season is almost concluded uh, baseball finished first uh, in the National East as you know this is the first year the new alignment uh, and the 20 schools in the GWAC. Uh, and so baseball finished first, softball finished fourth in the National East, and tennis finished second. Uh, our boys track team finished first. That's first out of 20, not just first out of five uh, in the National East. So that's quite an accomplishment. And Beaver Creek will finish second in the All Sports Trophy. Uh, behind what else? I'd just like to say that uh, within my basically 37 years of contact with uh, Beaver Creek Schools uh, that I've always been impressed uh, by the staff and administration uh, and just the community in general. I think the uh, honorees, and most of them, uh, stress the importance of uh, their families and their support for the, the educational process. Well, just to extend that a little bit, I think that uh, our Beaver Creek schools are, are a family, and I look at it just exactly that way. So, congratulations for nearing the end of the school year. Well, I want to thank everybody that came tonight. This, this is always a very special night. I look forward to this every year, where we honor our teachers who really are amazing and what they do for our kids. And our support staff, people, I don't think people realize just what everybody does to make a school system work. They have no idea what these people do every single day. And I also want to thank the administrators and the staff at Central Office. I want to thank all of you. Michael Schumann, who I call my IT guy. <laughs> amazing, amazing what you do, really. 
Thank you so much. Because we now have technology challenged on him. Let's just put it that way. And he's always so kind and says, Joanne, it's not your fault. Oh, yeah, really, it is. Okay. Just putting up, look at my husband. He's saying, oh, he's so right. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's the truth. I'm just my sewing. Let me near his computer. Okay. It's just another story. It's just my physical presence near these machines, but okay. Um, I've been, this, these last two weeks, um, been to so many different schools and these performances. Friends' last performance okay, made me cry. The talent on that stage, those seniors that sang, I'm like, really? And uh, Patrick Reinstein, his friend, who did, was it Solia? Soul? And I see it to believe it, really, yeah. To the muse machine, to the, um, the museum walks this week, it's just. You have to just go to these schools and see just what goes on here. It's just amazing. And like I said, for all my little beavers and high school kids say, this is where God, okay, they are. They are my little ducks. And you know, really, they're my little beavers. So thanks to everybody. And you know, hope everybody has a great summer. All the teachers and the parents who are constantly supporting our schools. Not only do they support it, the volunteer hours put in by these parents just blows your mind. You can't even begin to imagine. So I want to thank all of them for what they do for our schools. It is one family, like Mr. Taylor said. Thank you all. It's amazing. And God bless you all. Have a great summer. And um, that's the end of board comments. Um, we're going to go into executive session. So let me tell you, we're going into executive session for the purpose of the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of public employees, policy 121.22 G1, and no action will be taken following the executive session at this meeting, and B, collective bargaining policy 121.22 G4, I'm going to need a motion a second to put us in there. Yes. 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 